Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our anatomy playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the epidermis and dermis of the skin. And then we talked about the layer under the skin, which is fascia. There are two layers of fascia. The superficial fascia, see you last video, and the deep fascia, which is today's topic. Like this wonderful sheath around your vessels. And sometimes nerves. We call this a neurovascular bundle. So let's get started. This is my anatomy playlist. Let's go from superficial to deep. First, there is your skin. It has many functions. From superficial to deep, epidermis followed by dermis, then hypodermis. Hypodermis is the superficial fascia, which was last video's topic. The epidermis is made of five layers, stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, stratum basale on the basement membrane. Then you have the dermis, papillary layer and reticular layer which gives us the cleavage lines. And then under the dermis there is the hypodermis or superficial fascia fibrofatty tissue. What are the cleavage lines, you might ask? They are made by the reticular layer of the dermis. They have specific distributions in different parts of the body. And it's important that the surgeon cuts the incision parallel to those lines if you want the wound to heal beautifully via primary intention. And when the dermis gets attached to deeper structure, it leaves skin creases, such as stria, such as your fingerprints. Your skin has has color determined by pigments. Your skin has appendages. Please pause and review. Deeper to your skin there is the fascia. There is superficial fascia and there is deep fascia. Don't be like the authors of Gray's Anatomy 41st edition who said quote superficial fascia and deep fascia are no longer included in the Terminologica Anatomica. They said this in chapter 2. And then they continue to talk about superficial fascia and deep fascia in chapters 26, 29, 30, 43, and many others, as if they said nothing in chapter 2. Which probably means they did not read their own book before publishing it. Superficial, skin, deep, is fascia. The fascia is made of superficial fascia and deep fascia. Superficial fascia is the same as hypodermis, tela, subcutanea, and subcutaneous tissue. Deep fascia is deeper connective tissue. Some of them will invest muscles, we call them fascia musculorum. Some of them will surround viscera, we call them fascia visceralis. By the way, in medicine, the word visceral is synonymous with the word splanchnic. Pause and review. Superficial fascia, loose areolar adipose connective tissue that connects the dermis to the deep fascia. Sometimes the superficial fascia is very thin with no fat, such as these areas of the body. In other parts, they are thick and very fatty, such as this part of the body. In other places, they are very dense, such as the scap, the palms of your hand, and the soles of your feet. The superficial fascia has many functions, such as storing fat, insulating your body from the cold temperature outside, it gives you a nice contour, it contains mammary glands, it contains some sweat glands, and it contains some superficial muscles. Like, really? Muscle inside the superficial fascia? Yeah, like the platysma. What do you call it when you find the muscle inside the fascia? Paniculus carnosus. The flesh is now in the fat. Deeper to the superficial fascia is the deep fascia, which is tougher. Non-elastic. Fibrous tissue. Sheet that is rich in collagen. Function. Do you know your carotid sheath? Say thank you to your deep fascia. What's that? Neurovascular bundle with nerves and vessels. Who made this sheath? Your deep fascia. How about the aponeuroses, the retinaculae, limb compartments, all of them deep fascia. Moreover, muscles are attached to bones, but sometimes they are attached to deep fascia as well. There is a muscle that we will study later in head and neck anatomy. It's called the digastric muscle. It has two bellies, the anterior belly in front and the posterior belly. And then there is a hook around this muscle. Who made that hook? Deep fascia. It acts like a pulley. There is another lovely muscle, it's called the mylohyoid, and it looks like this. Piece on the left, piece on the right, and then there is a raphe in the midline attaching both sides together. Who made this raphe? Deep fascia. How about your interosseous membrane? Also deep fascia. Who made the compartments of your thigh? Deep fascia. The sheaths around your muscle? Deep fascia. 
How about the carpal tunnel of your wrist? Who made the flexor retinaculum and the extensor retinaculum? Answer, deep fascia. The flexor retinaculum is very important because sometimes the median nerve can get pinched underneath. This can cause tingling and numbness, which means pins and needles sensation. And this can lead to carpal tunnel syndrome. What's the surgical treatment for this? Well, you just cut the retinaculum and relieve the pressure off the median nerve. If I have carpal tunnel syndrome, we expect to see positive tunnel test, which means when you tap on my median nerve, which lies under the flexor retinaculum, ah, it's gonna hurt and I'm gonna feel pins and needles. Same thing is gonna happen with the Phelan sign. You're overstretching your median nerve and it's gonna hurt and gonna feel like pins and needles. How about increased pressure in a body compartment? This is limb compartment syndrome. Who made the compartments? Deep fascia. What if the pressure rises inside the compartment? It could be dangerous because it can compromise the blood supply to my forearm, for example, which will give me pain out of proportion to the injury. Extending or stretching my hand will cause severe pain. I get pins and needles. Maybe I cannot move my arm anymore and you cannot feel my pulse. My arm is tense and swollen. What's the treatment? Fasciotomy. What does that mean? tear the fascia apart to relieve the pressure, otherwise my limb will kiss goodbye. The fascia is also important in diseases such as fasciitis and compartment syndrome, as you've seen. I've just told you about limb compartment syndrome, but we have more. We have abdominal compartment syndrome, we have orbital compartment syndrome, and many others. You can learn about them by downloading my surgery high yields course on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.